Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the great state of Michigan. It rained last night. So we're gonna get that thing off. No, I can't go to the subway. What does perfect even mean? Is there even such a thing? Ooh, can we switch up all the rules? And imagine a utopia A darling understood that running, didn't it? These expectations, they keep weighing me down My heart is begging me to get the to the vlog watching Shelby Exotics and I'm Ryan we got a couple of the cars back we've got the GT350R that we had for sale for a hot minute not selling that Hellcat sport chassis Willys is in the garage clatter truck is over at our other property but we've got one of our exciting cars years since this cat's even been on the channel Construction has been halted. Well, I better fill you guys in on this. We're gonna do some stuff with the sport chassis today and we've got a car that's arrived that we're gonna go take a look at that I haven't had an opportunity to really spend a whole lot of time looking at. But here's the problem, folks. Um, hired a contractor to do the building, spent significant amount of time selecting siding and talking about poured walls and a well, for those of you that know pole barns, that's supposed to be a standing seam roof. What do you see on there that makes it a non-standing seam roof? Hmm? Well, other than the fact that it's only single layer thickness, you can see all the little fasteners on there, can't you? It's just regular pole barn siding. Well, in the early plans of the building, which actually should even be in here, we've got so here's our blueprints. This is the lot layout where the house currently is. That's the pole barn. It shows a 36 by 58 foot. And here we have, you can see, metal roof, right? See the spacing there? See the spacing there? See how it says metal roof? I'm going to put a picture in here. Uh, because this was changed. On the plans that I approved, this metal roof said standing seam roof and seamless siding, which you can see there's like 22 individual, you know, 
slats, I guess you could call them, or plank widths along the side. This right here, if you count just the black across, is 42, and we're not even done yet. So this looks totally different than what I had anticipated. Uh, it's totally different than what we talked about. There's some other concerns I have about, you know, the height of the soffits and the trusses and the trusses are spaced close together, but I don't know. I'm having somebody now go through this entire thing because my understanding was on top of the siding and the standing seam roof, that's enough to stop things right there. I tried to tell the builder before he started and he went ahead and did it anyway. And so now, uh, here we are with a half or not even close to finished building. This also was a, uh, well, I'm gonna show you this. These are windows, as you can see plainly. They're supposed to have grids in them and they're supposed to be triple pane and they're all nailed in, okay, all the way around. What the contractor told my wife is that uh, he's just storing them there because these aren't the proper windows. Okay, you can see where this is headed. So anyway, long story short, we are looking for a new contractor to finish this building because that one's been fired. I'm not gonna mention any names or what have you. There's just no sense in doing that. People make mistakes every day and we just have to roll with the punches. But when you're spending this kind of money on a barn, you want what you want and you want what was intended to be in here. If I wanted a... $40,000 pole barn, that's what I would have done. Uh, but I have concerns also, I've been doing some studying and some of these beams are not truly laminated. You can actually see the light up through there. I don't think that's really doing what it's intended to do for a laminated beam. Um, maybe some of you pole barn experts that are watching could tell me, but look at how much it's spreading at the bottom and then getting tight at the top and spreading again. So I just don't think that's right. Because those are together like this. The longer we go, the further apart they get. And there's LDL beams up here. But this really wasn't what we were gonna discuss today, but I wanted to let you know why I haven't posted any updates on the pole barn, because there's nothing to update right now. I have to have all the siding tore off, I'm gonna have the whole structure inspected for proper design, which I am assuming they're gonna find something wrong or something not done to either to code or properly. But I also wanted poured walls. And you can see I just have womanized lumber down there. And even some of these LVL beams, I don't know by looking at them, you can tell which ones are womanized and which ones aren't. And it looks like they all are, but again, you know, I, I don't know, I'm not an expert, all I know is things were not going as good as they should have. So that's where this is all going. You can see all the screws coming through the walls and stuff. It looks like tiny headers for the garage doors, but yeah, so that was kind of sad. This whole project's been delayed. But in the meantime, we're gonna take the sport chassis and you guys are gonna learn how to hook a gooseneck trailer up. Wouldn't that be exciting? And then we're gonna pull out the car that's here and take a good peek at that because it's got some new mods on it. So for those of you that don't know, this is my 2009 uh, International, or sorry, Freightliner Sport Chassis. Don't get all pissy, Freightliner guys. International's good too, but it's got a cat diesel motor in it. It's got a turbo boot leak somewhere because once you get to a hill, she just groans like no tomorrow trying to haul stuff. Um, but on general flat, it's pretty good. So let's put these prints away and we'll get rolling. It does look like a nap day, doesn't it? You take a nap, we're gonna hook up a gooseneck. Only got 104,000 miles on it, so fire up. Anybody knows how to initiate the glow plugs in here? I think that's it, so it's already doing it, but I don't know. And then we turn the air on, jack the back up. You kind of saw the truck was sitting like that. And then what we're waiting for, the alarm going off there is our PSI needs to get to the right level for our brakes to work because this has air brakes on it. So 
So we'll give that a second. In the meantime, let's see the inside of the sport chassis. Super comfy, air ride seats. Got the little air ride controllers down here. Or at least seat air ride. And that kind of adjusts your rebound and stuff. So we'll wait for the alarm to go off. That means our brakes are ready to roll. We got a cool school bus brake going on there. Looks like the back is raised. Should be good. I don't know what I'm reaching for here because there's nothing there. Put her in good old D. Brake off. So rolling out of the driveway, you'll see our big gooseneck trailer out here. It's a 44 foot gooseneck. Or 48, one of the two. I don't know, it's close to 53, I'll tell you that much. A 44 foot gooseneck. And basically we're gonna line up the ball that is down there in the back, you can see, with the trailer. And for those of you that are scared, like me, of hooking big stuff up without knowing what you're doing, we're gonna get this close and stop. So right now, put her in neutral, Parking brake back on, give her a second to kick in. Maybe just jump out, it keeps rolling. So here you're gonna see we are just about at the same level. So we're gonna back that up just a touch. So we've got this kind of lined up here and I think I can shock it a little bit with the jacks because they're all hydraulic. So there's not a lot of physical work involved. This is a good idea too. Boink. Or unless you shut it off. There you go. We take our key, a little bit dirty and shit, but it's not bad. Another key. Gets that goofy bastard there. Turns that on. And now we're... All right. I think definitely gonna need to move forward and then back. We gotta move. All right, waiting for the parking brake to engage. We're a little so I'm messing anything up, you know? We're getting awfully close here. All right, so we want to go. All right, this is a little weird. Thought I went that way, but must have went the opposite way. All right, so it's a little weird because you can't see. I got to get a camera out there for something bad. So we're going to pull out. Oh! Something felt like it hooked me. All right, brakes back on. Yeah, it did. Okay, that's what you don't want to do is hit that. Jeez. All right, so you guys are actually witnessing me cut my trailer, which obviously has happened a few times. So, all I gotta do is get that thing lined up and thing. It's the hardest thing about hooking this up. Like I said, there's not much physical work. It's just getting it 
Tractor lined up. Kick back on. So that looks good. So lower down. Enough to get the pin out. Okay. Take that up. Put the pin back in here. creaking going on. It's minorly scary. So then we just rock our pin forward on here, hook our safety chains up, and you got yourself, while uh, you hit the leveler, and bring the back back up. I already did that, and you got yourself a race hauler. All right, so we're gonna pull her forward. So don't wanna block the neighbor's driveway, so we'll stay right here. We're gonna charge the trailer up, so I'm just gonna leave the sport chassis running. That load leveler is right here, by the way. Hit that, and it goes down hit it again it goes up if it's on it's down this is your gate brake this is your that's your optional indirect lighting door lock unlock it's all pretty basic stuff and it's got different modes for towing so in here we got a visitor all the way from California and this just takes your regular old daily malackers. I don't really know why everything has to be that difficult. Cooperate a little bit, fella. This door you want to be careful of because I don't know if it's got a spring on it, but it weighs like nine fucking tons. And it always comes out a little bit. See that? It kind of scares me. Because if that bitch ever fell on you, that would seriously can hurt. These we're gonna get working again because that's what you should be able to use for unloading the uh, the ramp. The guy who owned it before me was a professional cobble fucker. You know, and I don't like cobble fuckers. I really don't. Because they, they take me a lot of time to uncobble their fuck. And this guy was the king of cobble fuck. All right, so you can kind of see the little guy back in here. I'm gonna let that, I'll let the tailgate down and get this guy out of here. I don't want you guys thinking everything goes perfect here at Shelby Exotics because it never does. Um, apparently, dum dum me did not have the car tied down right. So, eh, quick fix, except for that. We have the entire back again. Why? Why Why do I have to f*** everything up? So let that be a lesson to all of you. If you want your shit to stay nice, don't fucking trailer it. I mean, I think I've done more damage to my cars trailering it. In fact, I guarantee you I've done more damage trailering it than I have anything else now i've got to get the trunk all relined damn it i'm an idiot And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you hook up a gooseneck trailer for a big old race hauler. It's also how you do some custom body work to your GT350.
Looks like I need to buy a vent. I got a little vent missing here up on the front bumper, fender, dealy there. Let's get that fixed. Go we'll stand on the other side where it's a little more complete. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and that is how you hook up your gooseneck trailer for your race hauler and stuff. I don't know what track days we got coming up next. I'm not really making a whole lot of plans, but yes, those are blue chrome. That's why it's shining like that. All the stripes. The stripes are actually the same color. It's just they shine different. See, that's blue, and that's like a like a tealy color. It's the same. If I walk over here, it'll it'll flip. But if you like blue chrome, I would definitely do my stripes in blue chrome. I did do them in blue chrome. I don't know how to do an outro, so that's pretty much it here at Shelby Exotics for the day. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions on the sport chassis and hookup, by all means, put it in the bleep blooper section down there. Always fun to read the comments. So, see you guys soon. Have a good day. rounds out another episode of Shelby Exotics. It's kind of fun just to be back doing this again. It makes me feel a little bit more normal. Normal's a setting on your washing machine. Don't believe me, go look. Anyway, thanks for watching Shelby Exotics. It's always fun to have you guys stop by the house, see me screw some stuff up. Man, I had that race car looking good. And now it's all screwed up. It's all I see when I look at it. But for more Shelby content, Ferrari content, how to hook up trailers and other things, be sure to always watch this. Watch this channel. For lots of, uh, I don't know what kind of action coming at you. But we'll do something, by God. Those two pretty girls sitting out there together. I don't know that those two cars have ever been in the same place at the same time until right now. Kind of nice. You guys can see the difference. So believe it or not, the white car started out as a regular Shelby GT350 that I bought over in Madison, Wisconsin, and done a couple modifications to it since then. But <laughs>